transfer business in February? That's exciting, but unfortunately for Borough, it's not an incoming, it's an outgoing. He's in, and he's snuck it across to Hayden What is up guys, Matthew here and welcome back to the channel and I did not expect to be discussing Borough transfer related news in February. I thought we were done until the summer, as is the case, we are not because it has been reported and it is an outgoing unfortunately for Borough that Matt Crooks is leaving and he's heading to the MLS. Now, of course, the MLS season starts at the very end of February, I believe, but this has come from nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Matt Crooks was out of the previous game when we played Sunderland at the weekend, apparently with an injury. That, that still could be true. But regardless if that had any relation to what has happened over the last 24 hours or not, it was broke earlier today. And to be fair to the club, they were completely transparent. They even shared... A post bad themselves, but it was reported firstly by the Northern Echo that Matt Crooks was heading to the US in the next couple of days to complete a move to the MLS side Real Salt Lake. He wants to move for him and his family, and Borough will receive a significant fee for his transfer. Now, this is a this is a, a real surprise. I don't think any of us saw this coming. Matt Crooks, a player who hasn't always fit perfectly into Borough's system, but he's a sort of utility player, you could argue, who, you know, he can play in multiple positions. He's very effective, he's a goal scorer. I remember saying that he probably had his best run in a Borough shirt earlier in the season when Borough went on that really good run of form and Crooks was essential to that. He's also a massive, massive fan favourite. He's one of them players who just gets on really well with the Borough fans. And he is most people's, you know, favourite player. He's a really down-to-earth, nice guy. Really humorous guy as well. Genuine. He is, seems like just such a, a top guy. And to see him leave is a huge, huge shock. And he wants to leave. It's fair enough. You know, he wants to explore this avenue with his family. It's something new. He's obviously getting into his 30s now, so it's towards the back end of his career and he wants to, to, to go on and, and experience this, which is absolutely fine. And I, as will all Borough fans, we will wish him all the best. 100%. But the question is, where does that leave Borough? Because obviously the January window has come and gone, so the only chance Borough have got of replacing him is via free agents, which could happen, but of course you are very limited to what you can do in the free agent market. Now, we spoke quite detailed in my transfer window review and throughout the transfer window on what I thought of Borough's overall transfer window, and I kind of finished it feeling very apathetic about Borough's transfer window. We didn't go forwards, we didn't go backwards. You know, the three players we brought in were kind of like for like with the players who'd left in Morgan Rogers or the, the players who had long-term injuries like Bangura and Smith. With Azaz coming in, Ailing and Luke Thomas. So it felt like we'd not really took a step forward or took a step back. However, losing Matt Crooks, for me, now says, from the start of January and from the end of the summer, Borough have now took a step backwards from where we were, which is a concern. And it it's the same argument that I was talking about in that video. There's a footballing argument on the pitch and there's a financial argument off the pitch. And off the pitch, just like with the Morgan Rogers deal, it's a fantastic move for Borough once again because, let's be fair, we got Matt Crooks from Rotherham, I believe, for around a million pounds back in July of 2021. He only just signed a new contract at the start of this season. They'd extended his current contract to the end of next season, which a few of us at the time thought maybe it was so that if someone came in for him, we'd get a fee rather than him leaving for nothing in the summer. So if the whole contract extension was a way of Borough guaranteeing a fee for him, that's very clever from the club and once again, very good business off the pitch and because he obviously has that extension and his contract down to Borough to the end of next season, Real Salt Lake would have had to have paid something for him and we understand it is a significant fee which you would have to assume is more than what we, we bought him for which again proves that Borough have made a profit on a player and making a profit on a player who's entering his 30s is 
good business, no matter which way you dress it up, in my opinion. So, financially, Borough have got a player off the books at a time where we probably would not have got him for more than what we have now. You know, the end of this season, he'd have had one year left in his contract, could have then looked to leave on a free after that, and he would have been heading into his 31st birthday at that point. So, Borough, financially, once again, have been very smart, very crude, and it's a fantastic deal for us off the pitch. However, you've also got to look at this from an on-the-pitch perspective, and this is where it really concerns me for this season, because, obviously... We lost Morgan Rogers earlier in the window. We've now lost Matt Crooks. And when you look at Borough's goal contributors in the championship this season, take out Finazaz because all of them goal contributions, I believe, came with Plymouth before he joined Borough. Our top two goal contributors have left in January. Matt Crooks with nine, Morgan Rogers with eight. And yet, yeah, Finazaz has come in, he might balance that out in a way, but it's a lot to ask of one player. And you look at Matt Crooks through the season as a whole, 25 games, three goals, six assists. And that was playing at 10 in a position he may not look the most natural, but he certainly was effective. So essentially, Borough have lost two players in a position, being the number 10 behind the striker, which as you'll see from my squad graphic, is a position I already wanted us to add to at the start of January. At the start of January, we had Rodgers and Crooks in the squad, and I still wanted us to sign another player at 10 and another player up front. We brought Azaz in, so ting, I've turned that green and think, right, I'm happy at 10, well done, Borra. We've since lost Rodgers, who can play at 10 and up front, and we've also lost Crooks, who can play at 10 and play up front. So the two positions which I think we entered January in desperate need of improving, being 10 and the number 9 up front, we've completely regressed and gone backwards from where we were before. And now you look at it, we've only really got Azaz in at 10, because Greenwood's probably going to play on the left. After the Sunderland game, hell, he might start playing up front. So we're really relying on Azaz. To, to deliver the goods at 10 and let's not pretend he won't because again we look back to his goal contributions this might all be worried for nothing because if he picks up the farm he had at Plymouth and starts knocking in the goal contributions he did there he might fill in the gap left by both Crooks and Rogers, but it's a big ask for him already in his Borough career and it just leaves us lighter in the attacking department than we were at the start of January so again a bit like Borough's overall January window off the pitch, fantastic football dealing. On the pitch, it's not good for Borough. And this is how I sort of look at the whole situation holistically now, with Borough going in to the end of this season, the running, and of course going into next season. Now, obviously this deal has, has shocked a lot of Borough fans because Crooksy is very popular, but also... Again, it's a position where we were already a bit light and we would have liked improvements in that area. I am getting all of the vibes from Borra that this is very much a consolidation season. That's, that's what I'm getting from Borra at the moment. You know, we're prioritising what we do financially and I've mentioned I'm absolutely all for it if it makes us sustainable and we continue to sell players for a lot more than what we bought them for you can't begrudge the club for doing that a hundred percent but I feel like I don't think Matt Crooks would have been let go had we been ambitious and we were really going to go for it and achieve playoffs and promotion this season because as I say we've lost Rodgers in that position already you're letting a player go outside of the January window which means we are essentially only going to replace him via free agents, which is far from a guarantee. So I very much, even though the club will never come out and say it, Michael Carrick will never come out and say it, Kieran Scott had an interview with the 12th man on their podcast last week, he's never going to come out and say it. But I very much am getting the impression that Borough are just happy to just consolidate this season, bag the money they can for the players that were here, and we're going to have a bit more of an effort in the summer. I think we'll probably lose Hackney in the summer. There might be another few who leave as well, freeing up wage bills. Paddy McNair might not sign a new deal. He might leave and he's one of the highest earners at the club, which will massively open up a gap within the wage budget. And I think the summer might be when Borough 
really, really go for it. I think we are under no pressure, and I think Carrick's under no pressure. The squad's under no pressure to get playoffs this season. I really don't believe that. If we do, it will be a great bonus. But I think we're very much setting the squad up, and we want to add to it and build to it going into next season. Because, of course, as we've seen, compared to last season when we got Archer, Ramsey, Giles, Stefan... We were very over-reliant on loans. It's been made clear this season in numerous interviews that Borough were wanting to step away from loan signings and not rely on them, hence why we didn't get a loan signing in January, for instance. So I think it very much indicates that Borough are only wanting to buy players if they can and only loan temporary stop gaps, which will mean when we get to the summer, we won't have to replace five or six loans like we did last summer. We've already got the foundations of a young squad there and we'll have the finances to add to it. So I would agree that next season will look like a pretty good one for Borough and it's one I think we're in a better position to attack. However, what does that mean for this season? <sighs> I think it means, as I say, consolidation. And I said this on the Borough Breakdown podcast last week when asked whether I think we'll finish in the playoffs. Put my neck on the line... I said, no, you know, we're looking as much like an 8th to 10th place side the more and more I see us. I think we'll gradually fall away from a much more competitive pack. You've got Coventry, Hull, West Brom, some fantastic players. You could even argue Watford and Norwich might have a shout to get into them final two playoff places. And as well as that, if you want to only argue 5th and 6th up for grabs, the top four in the championship this season have arguably been the, the best top four we've ever seen. So the teams who do get into the playoffs who finish fifth and sixth have got such a struggle to try and overcome two of either Leicester, Southampton, Ipswich or Leeds, which is going to be very, very difficult. So this is probably the toughest playoffs we're ever going to have for a long time. And it's safe to say whichever teams sneak in there at the last minute are probably going to struggle big time. So I'm not going to lose sleep over the idea that Borough might not make playoffs this season because I'd probably have no confidence in us progressing through the playoffs this season. Obviously, you want to finish there because it keeps the season going, it keeps the excitement going, but I'm very much feeling from the club, the business we're doing, the lack of urgency to get new signings in, the sort of compromise or the comfort or the sort of laid back approach that seems to be around the club right now that things are good, we'll be all right, we'll keep building. We're in no rush to go up this season. We're in no rush to get playoffs. We are just building and getting the foundation set to attack next season, both on the pitch and financially off the pitch. And that's the difference. You know, short term right now, on the pitch, you'd say Borough are looking well short and we've made some questionable decisions in the transfer window. But off the pitch, it's bang on. It's perfect. It's absolutely spot on what we're doing. But I think that's short term. Long term, I think we'll be in a position to both attack off the pitch and attack on it as well. So I'm not holding my hands up, waving the white flag and giving up on Borough getting playoffs this season. But I think it's probably fair that we lower our expectations, ease them a little bit and just see what happens. Enjoy the ride and see where we end up this season. But I just look at it now and I think with Crooks leaving as well, our top two goal contributors up until this point have left. Benazaz is the only replacement and his start hasn't been the best. We'll just wait and see what happens, get as many players back as we can, see what we can do at the end of the season. And I'm probably arguably more excited for what we do in the summer already than what we're going to do between now and May in the current championship campaign. But do let me know your thoughts on the departure of Matt Crooks. I'm extremely sad to see him leave. He was a fan favourite and a real favourite of mine, but I'm not going to begrudge him for wanting to move and seek a new challenge in the States. And if it's good for Borough financially, then that's absolutely fine. As I say, it was a position we wanted to improve on anyway. He's not a natural in that position, but he's done one hell of a job there and he will be massively missed. So Matt Crooks, I wish you all the best. You've been a fantastic servant to this football club and uh, I'll be watching your career closely over in the States. I hope you smash it across the pond but do hit the like button on this video if you've enjoyed it subscribe for much more of course i'll be back hopefully to celebrate and chat about a borough win at the weekend after we play bristol city but uh, yeah leave me a comment below your thoughts on this deal and what you think it means for borough's playoff push or playoff chances between now and the end of the season but until next time guys do take care and i'll see you all in the next one mm -hmm.